Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel The Israeli. Today we're going to talk about um, renewing the peace process between Israel and the Palestinians and which is something which is being talked about now um, between the Palestinian Authority and the United States and we're going to go over two articles that are going to help us see um, what is needed in order to really restart this peace process. I just want to say before we go into the articles that this is a conversation that is done between politicians. And we all know that as these politicians, they kept talking and talking and talking. And if we'll say only since Oslo, it's 25 years now and nothing really came out of it. So I still think that the main thing that we need to do is start talking as people and bypass the politicians. And when the ground is ready, it'll be easier for the politicians to do what they promise because they'll have more support um, from the people. Okay, let's go. So this is the first thing I, I think we need is to build trust between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Nothing will work before we get this trust between the people, not the governments, yeah, between the people themselves. But let's go over these articles and see uh, what is needed um, in a diplomatic sense in order to get this peace process going. Okay, so the first article is with Biden. And Biden says, no peace uh, until region recognizes Israel's right to exist. And I said that in, I think, almost all my videos. All of you out there that are protesting against Israel and are singing from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, you're calling for the destruction of Israel. And as long as you're calling for the destruction of Israel, you're not for peace. You're not advancing peace and you're not supporting peace. What you're supporting is more bloodshed and more war, just so you know. So the only way to continue forward is to recognize Israel's right to exist. This is the first thing that has to be done. Now, the Palestinian Authority has already done that, to be totally honest. Hamas will never do that. It's in their charter that Israel has to be destroyed. But the Palestinian Authority has already done that um, in Oslo, and, and Abbas reiterated it. So this shouldn't be a problem um, when it comes to the Palestinian Authority. But there are other countries in the Middle East that are also needed um, that also have to recognize Israel, such as Syria, such as Iran. Yeah, um, I reach out here to all the Iranian people. We Israelis have no problem with Iranian people. We are much more similar than you think, and we should have peace between us. Okay, let's continue. There is no shift in my commitment to the security of Israel, no shift, period. What we still need is a two-state solution. It is the only answer. We talked about this in other videos. You know, I think that the two-state solution is the best answer, is the best solution. But I do also think that if we wait too long and we don't actually start having this two-state solution uh, coming to be, we have to think of different, of different solutions. And a one-state republic, which is built um, of two different autonomies that work under one umbrella and promise the, the sovereignty and uh, self-expression um, of each community, that might work as well. And I think we should start thinking of new ideas because this two-state solution, I'm all for it. And hopefully now something will happen and come out of it. But it's getting further and further away. And we should start thinking of other solutions as well. But I don't think it's the only answer. I think it's the best answer. Um, regional recognition of Israel as a Jewish state and a two-state solution are the way to peace. It has to be recognized as a Jewish state because, guys, after the Holocaust and after everything that went on in the Jewish people, the Jewish people deserve to have their own state without worrying about somebody taking over their lives again and again and again. So the Jewish people deserve to have their own state, just like Christians have their own state, Muslims have their own state, Buddhists have their own state, uh, Hindus have their own state. And many other people have their own state. The Jewish people deserve to have one as well. And the Kurdish people as well, by the way. The Kurdish people, if you're listening, um, this channel supports you and you deserve to have your own country as well. Um, 
In addition, we still need a two-state solution. It's the only answer. Um, there's no shift in my commitment to the security of Israel, period. No shift, not at all. I think that, you know, my party still supports Israel. Now, this is interesting, what he says here. I think that, you know, my party still supports Israel. You have to remember that Bibi Netanyahu um, went to Congress and he had two speeches in front of Congress uh, before the second Obama elections. Um, well, challenging Obama, especially on the Iran deal, and every, every advisor told him not to do that because it will just cause a rift between Israel and the Democratic Party, which is something we do not want to happen, and he did it anyway. And then later on with Trump, he supported Trump 100%, and right now the Democratic Party doesn't really trust Bibi Netanyahu. And, and you know, I can understand, he chose a side when everybody told him, don't choose a side in American politics, we play the bipartisan game, uh, we, we don't get ourselves involved in American politics. But he said, well, you don't do that, I do. And he went in and he did that. And now there's a big rift between, um, not Israel and, and the Democratic Party, even though that rift is growing as well, but between Bibi Netanyahu and the Democratic Party. And that's why he's saying here, I, am not, I think, you know, my party still supports Israel. He knows that there are cracks over there and the Israeli government has to do something about it as quickly as possible. And, and the first thing they need to do is not fight Biden on his plans for the near future. Work with him. Do not fight him, work with him. Build that bridge again with the Democratic Party. Okay, let's continue and see. Um, the U.S. is going to provide for security in the West Bank as long with its renewed economic assistance to the Palestinian Authority, uh, rebuilt homes in Gaza, allowing the funds, and not uh, without allowing the funds to get to Hamas. I think this is very, very important. Um, it's essential for PA President Mahmoud Abbas to be recognized as the rightful leader of the Palestinians as opposed to Hamas, which he points out is a terrorist organization. So that's good that he points out that Hamas is a terrorist organization, but saying that Mahmoud Abbas has to be recognized. He won elections 16 years ago for a four-year term. So 12 years he's been president without elections. He's, he's the, the Palestinians also, th also think that he's an illegitimate president at the moment. They should have elections and they should work hard in order to convince people to not vote for Hamas because this is the big fear that they'll have elections and Hamas is going to win and then Hamas takes over the West Bank and Gaza, and then guys, this is all out war. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I'm against war, but there's nothing I will be able to say or any of you will be able to say to stop it, yeah? So, but, but there's a big chance that with elections Hamas will win, but they need to have elections again so they'll have a legitimate leader that can, that can make the legitimate decisions for them. Um, so we'll, we'll see how they're going to deal with that. Um, Okay, and then the rest of it is about the ceasefire and how they built the ceasefire um, in 11 days, um, and he says he trusts uh, Bibi Netanyahu. That's politics because um, Biden was vice president for, to Obama, and the relations between the Obama administration and Bibi Netanyahu were extremely bad, and maybe they're a bit better with Biden, but there's still a lot that needs to be done here. Uh, to build the trust back up. Okay, let's go to the other article, which is not less important. So we said we need the countries in the area to recognize Israel and to rights to exist and to recognize it as a Jewish state in order to move forward with the peace process. And we said that uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian Authority, not necessarily Mahmoud Abbas, needs to be part of that process, especially with rebuilding Gaza and to make sure that Hamas doesn't get the money. How are they going to do that? I don't know, but we'll see. But this is part of the things that need to be done to get rid of Hamas in Gaza, to recognize Israel, um, to make the Palestinian Authority the legitimate authority over the Palestinian. Uh, that's, that's some of the basic things. Now let's see what else needs to be done. Abbas, ceasefire must include end to Jewish visitation to Temple Mount. Abba, Abbas emphasized the importance of including the PA in any a uh, plan to rebuild the Gaza Strip after fighting between Israel and Hamas. I agree with that 100%. The ceasefire between Israel and Hamas must include banning visits of, by Jews to Al-Aqsa Mosque compound on the Temple Mount. Palestinian Authority President Hubas told Egypt and Jordan. Now listen, 
This is a big problem. And we need to talk about this for a second. El Aqsa Mosque is, is on the Temple Mount, which means that under it you have the West Wall, yeah, which is the holiest site for Jews. Now on top where the mosque is now used to be the old temple, according to religion or history or whatever you want. Now please stop making holy places into political places. This is what makes this whole barrel of gunpowder explode every time. Treat holy places as holy places, as places to unite people, not to separate between them. Now, I think that in a democratic country, or whatever the future holds for Jerusalem as an international kind of a city, as uh, its own autonomy, um, separated between the, as it is now, whatever, it's still going to be democratic, and holy places should be open to everybody. You cannot say Jews cannot go up to the Temple Mount. You cannot say that. It will not work. Jews will not agree to that. I am not religious. I have no problem not going up to the Temple Mount if it makes the Palestinians feel better. But I am not religious. And people who are religious have the right to go and pray in their religious places. And I support the religious Jews 100% here that they have the right to go up to the Temple Mount. Do, have the, do they have the right to go up there and, and make problems? Do they have the right to go up there and try to, to clash with the Muslim prayer, uh, Muslim people up there? No, they don't. They do not. They need to go up there, be respectful, yeah, and do their thing and go back home. Yeah, respect the holy place. But today, even today, when Jews are allowed to go up to the Temple Mount, they're not allowed to pray up there. Yeah, they're not allowed to pray. This is ridiculous. Yeah, a Jewish prayer on the Temple Mount can start, can start a, a fire in the Middle East. Guys, this is ridiculous. This is a holy place. It should be open for everybody in a respectful way, in an organized way. It can be done. Yeah. Uh, there are other places in Israel that are, that are shared between the Muslims and the Jews. And they have days and they have hours and they have everything. And it works fairly well. Not perfect, but fairly well. And over here they can do something as well. Um, you know, holy places should be for everybody. It should be to unite people, not to separate them. And I think that Mahmoud Abbas here is wrong. Maybe he's doing it for political reasons, but he's wrong. Okay, let's continue. Abbas made the demand during separate meetings. Okay, so he really wants this. But this is a problem because the Temple Mount is a holy place for Jewish people as well. And they want to go up there and pray. Not every day, not all the time, but according to days and hours, they're willing to negotiate about it. But to, So most of it will be for the Muslims because it is a mosque after all. But Jews should be allowed to go up there in an organized way. Um, okay, um, Abbas, the importance of rebuilding the Gaza Strip. I agree with him. Um, he also told uh, uh, the Arab ministers that he was ready to work with the U.S. administration and the quartet with Russia, uh, United Nations, and the European Union. Now, Israel might be able to work with Russia. We have good relationships with Russia and the European Union also. But United Nations, Israel does not trust the United Nations, period. It does not. And I can make a whole video about the United Nations being um, against Israel, um, especially. And, you know, like Israel has more resolutions against it than North Korea, Syria, Libya, and I don't know, so many really horrible places together. So Israel does not trust the United Nations, and the United Nations should not be part of this process. It shouldn't. The European Union, Russia, and America... You know, Russia is a bit problematic, but maybe if it balances out America for the Palestinians, then I have no problem with them being there. Um, of course, Turkey and China that also want to take p uh, part of this, forget about it, Turkey. Forget about it, China. We will never accept you as mediators in this process. I'm sorry. Um, Referring to the ceasefire that went into effect Friday morning, Abbas told Safadi on Tuesday that the period of calm between Israel and Hamas must include stopping attacks and incursion of extremist settlers backed by Israeli occupation forces. Okay, so this is again going into the Al-Aqsa, which I said my opinion about it. And I do believe that the militant Jews that go up there in order to show force and power and that their control, this should be stopped as well. This should be stopped as well. This should not be allowed. If you're going up there to make problems, then you should not be allowed to go up there. 
if you go up there to be respectful, do your prayer, do your thing and go back home, shouldn't be a problem. But if you're going up there to make problems, then I agree with Mahmoud Abbas, you shouldn't be allowed to go up there. Um, Monday Abbas, okay, 500 million to rebuild the Gaza Strip, that's a very nice amount, but think about it, if 500 million somehow finds its way to Hamas, or even a small part of it, 10% of it, 50 million, finds its way to Hamas, this is going to be a big problem. Uh, but Sisi affirms Egypt's solidarity with the PA leadership and the Palestinian people. And, and Sisi and Israel have very good relationships, and I think that today Israel can trust Sisi to, to be responsible when it comes to that. But again, Hamas is not going to stand by and see millions and millions and millions of dollars go to the Palestinian Authority and just do nothing about it. It's going to be very interesting in the near future. And I suggest for everybody to be patient because interesting in the Middle East means violent. So be patient and let the process move along. We need to get rid of Hamas, we need to weaken Hamas, and it's not going to be peaceful. Yeah, they're not going to go peacefully. Um, coordinate with the Palestinian ahead of Lincoln to our region. Okay, Palestinian to reconstruct. Uh, he also stressed the need to revive the peace process with Israel under the, again, United Nations should, should not be there. In order to establish independent Palestinian state and East Jerusalem as its capital. Now, this is the other problem with the peace process. Israel does not want to give any parts of Jerusalem. And it's not willing to give up um, East Jerusalem, which I think is another mistake Please, um, right-wing people that are, un are unwilling to give up East Jerusalem, tell me what is the benefit of Israel holding East Jerusalem? What is the benefit? Please, I want to know. There are 200, 250,000 Palestinians living there. They have all the Israeli rights, yeah, like social security and health care and education and everything. Israel pays for it. But they don't vote because they're not complete citizens. And we're just holding them there. Uh, just because it's in Jerusalem. 250 Palestinians that if we give it to the, Palis to the future Palestinian state, you know, it's, it's 250,000 less Muslim Arabs are part of Israel. You know, we have a 20% minority as is. As, and, 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 and putting 200,000 in, in a Palestinian state and off Israel, it's a big save for Israel. I don't see the logic in fighting to keep East Jerusalem. And, and this whole thing that's happening in Sheikh Jorah, um, right-wing um, organizations buying legally, uh, buying houses there, and then, and then using the law to evict Palestinians. There are 250,000 Palestinians living in East Jerusalem. Are you going to buy out all of them? Are you going to take all of them to court and, and have the police evict all of them? Because that's going to look really nice in international TV. I know the people who are doing it, they don't really care because they don't plan on living, leaving uh, to other countries. They don't do business with other countries. Their business is fulfilling the, the religious Jewish dream of one, of one country. But it makes no sense. It just hurts Israel. It, this, is, this is unattainable. And you need to give it up. And East Jerusalem should be negotiated as, as part of the future uh, Palestinian state. Or I think that Jerusalem should just become an international city, its own kind of like Vatican kind of thing, to have its own world, yeah? Not, not connected to anybody. It will be an international sovereign, sovereign city, like a city-state. I think that's possible. But, but, but please, Israeli right-wingers, why do you need East Jerusalem so much besides the religion? It makes no sense. It does not make Israel stronger. It does not make Israel um, smarter. It does not make Israel more successful. It does not add anything to Israel. It just makes people angry. And if the Palestinians there wanted to be part of Israel, you know, I'll say, okay, but they don't. They don't. Let them go. But this is a big problem, which will have to be negotiated. Um, Jordan supports for ending Israeli aggression on the Palestinian Jerusalem and the holy sites. Okay, you have to understand that Jordan is 70% Palestinians, so it has to take the Palestinian side, but it has very good relations with Israel. Um, Ramallah, after meeting the PA Prime Foreign Minister, positions of the US administration towards the Palestinian issue is positive. So this is good because 
the four years of Trump, the Palestinians did not see anything positive and the plan of the century, they did not like it to say the least. And now with Biden, they call it positive, which means that maybe if we do everything correctly and, and we weaken Hamas and the international community, especially all those lefties that hate Israel and support Hamas, you are not pro-Palestinians when you support Hamas. And every time you make a video that supports Hamas, you're making peace more distant, more harder to achieve, more impossible to attain. So stop being useful idiots. Continue supporting the Palestinians. There's no problem supporting the Palestinians. But when you support Hamas, you do not support the Palestinians. When you support Hamas, you do not support peace. When you support Hamas, you, pu you support bloodshed and war. That's what you are s doing. So please stop being useful idiot. Continue supporting the Palestinians. There's no problem doing that. But supporting Hamas, you're just hurting the Palestinian cause. I know that many of you, your cause is to continue this conflict forever, uh, to separate between the two people that have a lot in common and can definitely live together if, you, if, if everybody stops um, putting them one against the other. But we are here to, 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 to have peace in the future, even though many of you want war. But we're still going to fight for peace, whether you like it or not. And if you continue supporting Hamas, you have no right to criticize Israel. Zero right to criticize Israel if you're supporting Hamas. Okay, um, Safadi also warns the eviction of Palestinian families from their homes in East Jerusalem neighborhoods in Sheikh Jarresh uh, would be considered a war crime that would lead to an explosion in Palestine. So again, I said my opinion about evicting people from their homes and Israel should take um, those things into consideration. Um, but the Supreme Court in Israel does abide by international law and these cases are still um, held in the Supreme Court and we'll have to see what happens if the Supreme Court says yes it belongs to the Jews and the Palestinians need to leave or they say uh, we need to come to some kind of an agreement we need to see but either way whether you agree with the Palestinians or you don't agree with the Palestinians evicting people from their homes should not lead to an all-out war in the Middle East it should not lead to an all-out war in the Middle East. There are ways to fix it without having innocent bloodshed. And yes, Israel here is responsible to say what is more important. Um, our Israeli laws of property or keeping the quiet in the Middle East and, walking and, 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 and working towards peace. What, what's more important? As a country, it needs to make decisions. And I think that working towards peace and, and, not, and not fighting for the laws, the Israeli laws, letting the people stay in their homes, not evicting them, is the right thing to do. But I'm not part of the Israeli government. I can't tell them what to do, and even if I could, they wouldn't listen to me. But this is my opinion. Whether it's a war crime, I don't know. I really am not an international lawyer. And would lead to an explosion in Palestine, I think that this is definitely should not lead to an explosion in Palestine and in the Middle East. It, it should not. Yeah, there are other ways to deal with it without starting um, a war, okay? But I do think Israel should take responsibility here and do the smart thing. Maybe not for the, maybe on, on their side, not the right thing, but the smart thing. Yeah? Okay. So that's more or less the main problems that we have, recognizing Israel, right to exist, recognizing Israel as a Jewish state, um, East Jerusalem, um, Hamas, getting rid of Hamas, um, the whole Jerusalem thing, um, the West Bank, what to do with the settlers, how to deal with the settlers, that's a whole thing that will have to go into negotiations. Um, I do hope that they will start some kind of negotiations soon. I do hope that Biden will be able to give money to the Palestinian Authority in order to rebuild Gaza and, and manage to get keep it out of the hands of Hamas. If he's able to do that, that will be amazing. And I do hope the peace process starts again. It's about time that we started again, but I think it's more important for people, for us citizens, to start talking with each other. And I'm calling out here on this channel, I know it's a tiny channel, not too many viewers, not too many subscribers, I know, but still I'm Israeli and I'm willing to talk with any Palestinian about this subject. If you're not Palestinian, I'm sorry, but I will maybe I'll, um, I'll be able to talk with you about other issues. But this issue should be done between Israelis and Palestinians alone. 
um, to have the conversations by themselves without anybody interfering. And I'm willing to have here on this channel any Palestinian that wants to come and speak uh, with me about any topic and any issue, and I'll answer any questions, and I'll ask questions that they want. Okay, guys. So thank you for watching this video. Those of you who watched until the end, thank you very much. As always, if you like the content, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. It helps a lot. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.